This is a book about loss, but also about profound love. Anyone who has faced catastrophic illness will recognize in these pages that this is also a book about living, about the strong bonds of family and how they can sustain us through impossible situations. By sharing this story, I hope readers will experience our pain, be witnesses to it, and come out stronger for it. When my husband was first diagnosed with ALS, we didn't have time to come to terms with the diagnosis, but were immediately plunged into a steep descent, ricocheting from crisis to crisis. I didn't have the chance then to think about what it all meant. All I could do was react to the emergencies facing us. I started writing this memoir to sort it all out with words and pictures, since that's how I think, how I've approached my children's books. I needed to shape the whirlwind we had lived through so I could better understand it, so I could see that I had done what I could and move beyond the inevitable guilt. In many ways, this is a portrait of marriage, how it can sustain and abandon us, how families heal themselves, and how to cling to a sense of self in the face of medical horrors and mind-numbing bureaucracy. So there's heartbreak in these pages, but also universal truth. We all have the capacity to face adversity, to come through it, and to heal. We all think we know how to live good lives. What's trickier is how to handle death, how to be with the dying and hold their pain and fear in our hearts, and then let them go. I thought Harvey and I would grow even closer, united in fighting the dread disease. Isn't that what's supposed to happen? Illness brings clarity of purpose and vision, weeding out the superficial, the trivial. Isn't that what's supposed to happen? Instead, Harvey focuses on himself, his work. I can feel him turn to stone whenever I reach out to touch him. I'm not caught up in a gauzy made-for-TV special where people become noble and wise in the face of catastrophe. I don't feel more spiritual either. I don't even feel like a better person truly appreciating life. I feel like a wet rag, exhausted, used up, hollowed out. There's nothing left to me at all. This isn't how it's supposed to be. The thick fog of secrecy is lifted. We should all be enjoying the clear air, the bright sunlight, the sparkling view of San Francisco from our window. So why aren't we? When will things go back to the way they were? Or better even, all those stories about how emotionally deep and rewarding facing death can be. Why isn't that our story? Instead, it's laundry and shopping and errands, packing lunches and helping with homework. Nothing the least bit noble or enlightening. Mom, there's no pickles or apples or anything. We can't snack on condiments. This is the month to decide, to go on the ventilator or not. Harvey's breathing is so impaired, Kathy, the neurologist at the ALS clinic, says we can't wait any longer. She gives us material to look over as homework. Tracheotomy is the surgery to have a hole cut in the throat. Tracheostomy is the hole itself. Is there a special school for how to make informational pamphlets? They all have the same look with the obligatory African-American and Asian. Where's the token Jew, the turban Sikh? Who cares about the pictures? It's gross. Look, the woman has to write out what she wants to say. Dad won't be able to talk? Isn't breathing more important? Harvey could talk using a computer like the woman in the ALS support group. Or he could learn to speak on the exhale the way Christopher Reeve did after his accident left him dependent on a ventilator. Is that our future? The pamphlet is one thing, but the video seems too real, too horrible for the boys. I send them to Sheila's while we watch it. We need to make this decision without distractions. Ventilation is a serious choice. Ed is totally paralyzed now. We have nurses to help, but they're expensive. Tens of thousands of dollars a month. We've gone through our savings. I guess we have to sell the house now. A ventilator is my friend. I live in this nice facility with all the help I need. They take good care of me. A facility? Nurses? Bankruptcy? I, I, I can't do it. I'm a horrible person, but I can't. How can I take care of you, the boys, and still write? I don't want you to. Those people in the video are all paralyzed. I can still take care of myself, even on a ventilator. Call those names Kathy gave you. The people of spouses on a ventilator. Ask exactly what's involved. I love Harvey. I can't imagine life without him, but I can't imagine being a caregiver either. If I can't write or draw, I'll disappear. I can't think about it.